<laughs> hey there, Deadite version of Buddy Cosplay here. When I was a young Deadite, uh, I wanted to learn how to create my own armor props. And I didn't want to spend a literal, a literal eternity searching the bowels of the underworld, trying to find all the information that I wanted. So that's when I found Cosplay University. Speaking of university, uh, I had this friend here, um, and she was just let me tell you, she was crazy. I mean, she was off the chain crazy. Uh, so then uh, one night we were out with her. So yeah, then I flunked out from that school, but I found this awesome online place where I was able to find my bliss, if you will. And uh, I was just becoming another, I didn't want to be just another drone sitting in an office, just, yeah, I'm a robot. Yes, sir, TPS reports, stay off my skateboard. I didn't want to be that And she was all like, Brenda, man, that dude was so hot. And I was like, why are you telling me this, Brenda? I'm a dude, I don't want to hear this. So Brenda went on and kept telling me this crazy story. Hold on, let me read you this one. So a guy walks into a bar with the parrot on his shoulder. And the bartender sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> looks so real. Raiden wins. <laughs> Tons of uh, ways to learn and unprecedented instructor access, which is a huge thing for a lot of people. And there's a monkey with gum coming out of his butt. It says, don't swallow gum. Sorry, I keep getting sidetracked. But Cosplay You has really helped me uh, become the envy of all the deadites all across the netherworld. And I think it might be something that can help you also gain some immense, immense cosplay power. All right, you've said enough. Time to go, buddy. But I'm not yet finished, mere mortal. You have no power over me, and you shall not banish me back to the bowels of the under... So, yeah, that was a thing. Let's go ahead and get started making this, shall we? Hey everybody, Buddy Cosplay here. Welcome down to the shop. And what my dead friend was trying to say that if Cosplay University sounds like something that might interest you, hop on over to cosplayu.club and see what it's all about. I will put a link to that in the description down below. So what brings us to do the Necronomicon build version 2? Well, if you watched the original video that I put out over a year ago, you'll know that it's about 22 minutes long, and that's just a little too long. So we're going to condense it into a smaller video, and I'm going to show you a technique that was a lot easier. The last time we did several layers of liquid latex using tissue paper and paper towel to kind of be the support structure for the liquid latex. And this way is a whole lot easier. You can do it in two steps, which might take an hour or two um, to, to do everything. Uh, minus dry time. Dry time may take overnight, but basically uh, this is a much more usable prop. As you can see, it opens. We have pages, uh, so you can carry this around and use it to cast spells and raise the dead, where the other one was basically just a prop for display only. So this one's much more usable, so I wanted to show you how to do that from start to finish. And of course, if you have a latex allergy, you may want to skip this build because we will be using liquid latex. We're going to begin with a blank page sketchbook that I picked up at Hobby Lobby for $8.99. I'm also going to boil some water and throw in some tea bags. I'm going to use the tea bag water to uh, make the pages look a little more old and distressed. As you can see, these pages are blank, which is what I want. And these little rubber thing are little stretchy things, and the bookmark will all just come off with a pair of scissors. Once the tea has soaked or steeped for about eh, an hour, I just add it on with a chip brush, and then I crunch the pages up. It helps the tea sit in little sections and get little darker areas. And I repeat this for the remainder of the pages. I eventually wound up taking out every other page of this 80 page book to make it only 40 thick. When it's all done, uh, don't be afraid to leave it sit overnight to dry or you can use a hair dryer to help speed up the process. 
To distress it a little bit further, I added a black wash to the edges and along some of the inside areas. A black wash is basically black acrylic paint watered down with just some water. And as I was doing these various stages of distressing the pages, I would often go through and use the hair dryer to speed up the drying process so I could move on to the next page. I had some splatter here and there, just to make it look like it's old and dirty. I distressed a little bit further by making some rips in some of the edges, using some scissors to make the pages not so straight, and I even burned a couple sections. And if you burn this, make sure you don't catch your house on fire. Be very careful, and I have water handy. I used some red paint just to make a handprint on one of the inside covers of the book, and some splotches here and there that was supposed to resemble blood. Sped dry that with a hair dryer, and added some more here and there. You can leave the book overnight open to dry. I decided to stress the pages a little bit more and I used some scissors to do so. I got me some Necronomicon page images off the internet which I then added in by hand, first drawing them in pencil and then going over with red acrylic paint. Shaded it in, dried it with the hair dryer and voila, I have pages. I only did about six or seven pages. So when you're using it, just keep that in mind if you're using it as an active prop. To protect the inside pages, I wrapped that with some plastic wrap, got out a reference picture of a Necronomicon, and I'm going to begin putting on the latex, just using latex and flour. And I mix them together, putting the latex in first, adding flour until I get the desired consistency of about thick oatmeal. As you can see, I dip my finger in the latex because anytime you're using latex, it will stick to just about everything. So if you put a little latex on your fingers first, it'll keep it from sticking too much. We'll also do that with every tool or instrument we use as we go forward. I laid down a full thin base layer, and then I added some more, and then I started working it into a shape that resembles a face using a popsicle stick that I had previously dipped into the latex. I'm adding two places that appear to have stitching, one at the top and one at the bottom. I just did that by running an instrument through there and making a little gap. I found some regular staples that I use for my staple gun, and I broke them off two at a time to make them a little bit thicker, and I added them one by one to make it appear that the stitches are held together with staples. You could also do this with some twine or something like that. I like the staples. And then I left that overnight to dry. Once it's dry, you want to make sure you take some flour or some baby powder, and you want to coat this very well. This will prevent it from sticking to any other latex that you use. Once it's good to go, I'm going to flip it over and we're going to do the back side. You can see I also did the spine the first time. I'm going to overlap that with the second layer that I'm putting on the back. So I'll really lock it in. I'm using a finger with some latex on it to smooth things out and to make sure that I pay attention to the edges. And then I'm adding some detail just using a screwdriver with a little latex on the end. And again, going over the spine to make sure it is overlapping and locked in. I left that overnight to dry as well. And it's good to go to the next stage. I began with a medium brown color and I painted the entire thing front and back and allowed that time to dry. I went in with a darker brown just to add in some highlights around the stitching area, around the eyes and things like that. Here you can see a little bit of difference in color. I finished that up by covering the whole thing in matte varnish. This will protect the underlying paint that I'm putting on right now. So when I go to weather it and distress it more, it won't ruin that paint. I also went through and painted the black areas on this and scraped off all the latex that was over top of the screws to make them show up. And I should have done all this before I added the matte varnish, but I forgot, so I had to add an extra layer of the matte varnish. 
Once the matte varnish was dry, I began to do a weathering coat, which is just the diluted black acrylic that I watered down really well, applied with a chip brush, and then wiped off with a towel. Here you can see the difference between the side that has the weathering and the side that doesn't. I continued this for the rest of the front. I used a hair dryer to dry it. I did the spine, flipped it over, I did the back. I even opened it up and made sure I got the latex that I put on the inside to really make it look like everything is, is the same. And we finished that up by adding another layer of a matte varnish to finish things up. And this will protect your weathering coat and everything else. And once that has had time to dry, your prop is finished. Here it is, with some fire.